Hi guys, I'm the Well-Paid Geek. I'm going to be teaching you how to build this autocomplete text box using React. It's one of those text boxes where you type and get a list of possible items you can select which fill in the text box, a bit like the auto-suggestion search boxes on most search engines. What I really like about this is that it has real-world uses. It's a very simple component, but by creating it you'll learn about reusable React components, props, component state, and using CSS with React. I've broken it down into four videos, so you get it all in nice bite-sized chunks, and we can go quite detailed in each. Let's begin. You'll first need to set up a new React app by installing Create React App, creating a new app with it, and then run it by going to the directory in the terminal and doing npm start. If you need more details on this, click on the notification now to watch my Getting Started with React in under 10 minutes video. Open the code in an editor. We're going to create a new component. First, create a new file for your component and call it autocompletetext.js and it should be in the SRC folder. Components are the building blocks of any React application. They can be configured using something called props, more on that later in the series, and they can hold their own mutable data called state. They can be used to represent anything in your UI, from small things like a standalone UI widget, such as this autocomplete text box we're going to create, right up into something large like an entire web page. Components are reusable, so you can use them many times on one page or even across different pages. They're also composable. You can think of them like Lego bricks. You can fit them together to build other larger components. First, we need to import the React module. You need to do this for every component you create. Then we create a class to represent our component, and we're going to call it autocomplete text. It needs to extend the react.component class in order to make it a component. Our text box will need the list of all possible items that it can autocomplete with. In a future video, I'll show you how to make that configurable, but for now we're just going to hard code a list of names. To do this, first create a constructor. React component constructors must take an argument called props and call the superclass constructor passing the props argument to it. This just ensures the component is set up properly. Let's add a member variable called items, so it's this.items, and it's going to be an array. We create a member variable so we can access it from anywhere in the class later. So let's add some names now to the array. These will be what can be shown in the autocomplete dropdown. They're all the possible items to autocomplete with. Now, the markup for our component. At the heart of any React component is the render function. It will examine all of the component's data, and based on this, will render the markup for the component. The idea is that when the component's data changes, the markup changes, so the user sees something different. So, we define our render function. From this, we must return the React elements we want to represent our component. Some magic called JSX lets us write them directly within the JavaScript as HTML tags. So we're going to return a wrapper div and inside it a text input. This is going to be our text box. We're also going to put an unordered list to hold our autocomplete suggestions. We'll worry about showing only items that match the text entered later. For now, let's show all the items in the list. So we have this as an array, so we can just output an li for each item in the items array. Now, this is going to be an expression, and to mix expressions into our markup using JSX, we need to wrap them in curly braces. Anything within curly braces will be evaluated and the value output within our markup. This can be anything from a simple string to the results of a function call or even other React elements. 
We want one Li per item in the list. So inside those curly braces, we're going to map over the array and output an Li for each item. Within the Li, we have the item itself. This itself is an expression, so is also wrapped in the curly braces. The result of this map is an array of React elements. Now, if we put an array of React elements within curly brackets, each element in that array will be rendered. Although we're nowhere near finished yet, I think this is a good time to check how our new component looks in the browser. So far we have our new component, but haven't used it anywhere. We can use the component just like a custom HTML tag. The component itself is just the definition. We need a new instance of this definition, which will be a React element. Let's do that now. So you want to go to app.js, this is our main top level component for the app, and we're just going to delete all this. We don't need that header section at all. And we also want to go into index.css and just put 50 pixels of margin at the top of the body, just so we've got a bit of space up there when we put our text box in. So first we need to import our components module. And we're going to use the component just like a custom HTML tag. So it's just autocomplete text as an HTML tag. So you should be running the app using npm start in the folder in the terminal so that it will hot reload in the browser when you change the code. Let's take a look. As you can see, we have our text box and our list with all the names in it. When the user types in the text box, we're going to need to know about it so we can filter the list so that only items that match what the user types are displayed. We're also going to need the current text which has been entered for the same reason. So let's get that text now. You can add events to elements in React much the same way as you can in HTML. So this text input has an onChange event available. So we add that and we're going to assign a function to it. Since a function is an expression, we wrap it in curly brackets. And all the function is going to do is take the event that has been generated and console.log event dot target dot value or e dot target dot value because um, e is the event target is the element which is the target of the event and the value is the value of the html text input let's check that in the browser so we right click and choose inspect to open the developer console and choose console from the tab above then we type in the text field and as we do, you can see the text being output each time we change the value. In the next video, I'll show you how to use component state and how to filter the items in the list based on what the user types. Now, if you can't wait till then, the link to my 10 hour long in-depth React and Redux course is in the description below. I have new videos going out regular as clockwork every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 9am Eastern Time. Click that subscribe button now and don't miss them.